Professor Parkins, how pale you look. I'm sure you need another cup of tea. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Spenlow. That it would be most welcome. Ah. There. <clears throat> Don't you find the heat quite oppressive this afternoon? I told my husband we should have held our little at home in the garden. Well, it's, it's certainly close, but uh, to tell you the truth, Mrs. Spenlow, I'm not affected by the heat. I, I had a slight uh, shock just now. It's quite trivial, but... Um, can't help one's reaction. Now, what can it have been, I wonder, to make you so very pale? Well, it was... <coughs> you laugh at me, I know. It was a surplus. A surplus, Professor? Yes. A choir boy's surplus, <coughs> hanging on a peg in the vestry of the chapel. The door was open, and I saw it stirring in the wind. That's all. Good gracious me. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Just a piece of white linen hanging on a peg, moving in the breeze. But uh, it really alarms me when I see anything of that kind. Well, you really must tell me why, Professor. <laughs> I love strange stories, especially from archaeologists. Oh, well, very well, if you insist. Nobody believes me, but I <laughs> go on telling them what happened. It all began a few years ago when I was dining in hall one evening at the end of full term. One of my neighbours leant over and asked me, I suppose you'll be getting away pretty soon, Professor. Oh, yes, I've taken up golf this term, you know, and I intend to go to Burnstow for a week or so <laughs> to improve my game. Do you know it at all? Oh, yes, indeed. Remote old place, isn't it? Typical East Anglican coast village. I understand there'll only be golfers to foregather with, but I shall not mind in the least. Their conversation will be a pleasant change from that of my students. <laughs> uh, did I hear you mention Burnstow, Parkins? Uh, yes, I was just saying to Brown. I, I'm off there tomorrow. Oh, then I wish you'd look at the site of the Templar's Preceptory there. I'd like your opinion of it in case it's worth a dig in the summer. Uh, certainly, Purdom. I'll be delighted. Uh, where's the site? Well, it must be quite close to the beach now. The sea's crept in tremendously all along that bit of coast. I don't think there's anything showing about ground, but I think the site's about three-quarters of a mile from the Globe Inn. Uh, oh, that's useful, because I, I, I'm staying at the Globe. The trouble is, they can only give me a double room. No, oh, where's the trouble in that, Parkins? Oh, look here, I'll come down for a bit and keep you company. Uh, oh, do, Rogers. Yes, by all means. But I'm afraid you'll find it rather dull. You don't play golf, do you? No, thank heavens. Of course, if you don't want me, say so. I, I won't come if I'm unwelcome. No, 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 my, my dear fellow, I didn't mean to suggest Just that you Decide just as you please about it. I thought I'd do nicely to keep the ghosts off, though. Oh, really, <laughs> Roger? I'm sorry, Parkins, I, I wouldn't have said that. I forgot you don't like levity on these topics. Well, as you've mentioned the matter, I confess that I don't like careless talk about what you call ghosts. A man in my position can't be too careful about appearing to sanction the current beliefs on such subjects. I think I've never concealed my views. Very sensible views, Parkins, especially for a chap who spends his life digging up the dead. <laughs> <laughs> my dear fellow, we must talk seriously about these things. By all means, come down to Bernster. All right, I will. It won't be for two or three days. I have some clearing up to do. A good game, Colonel. Thank you. Don't thank me, Professor. Pleasure to play with you. And now shall we be moving? This air is really very chill. Which way shall we go? Uh, do you mind if we go back along the beach? No, at all. I want to take a look at some ruins a friend of mine asked me to inspect for him. Uh, there should be light enough to see. Mind you, I don't know exactly where they are, but I expect I shall stumble across them. Oh! oh. Steady on, oh. Professor. Ah. Hurt yourself? Mm. Yeah. No, thank you. No, no, just a, just a twist to the ankle. It'll go off in a minute. Ah, uh, uh, so that's what I fell over. Hmm. What is it? Looks to me like a lot of flints sticking out of the exactly ground. Exactly what it is, but they were put there by human hands. These mounds of flint, which are almost invisible among the turf, are no less than the remains of one of the Templar's round churches, Colonel. Indeed. How do you know that? <laughs> well, I must admit I came expecting to find something of the kind. The Templars built round churches, and here... Yes, 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 here we have the traces of the, the circular plan. It's very interesting. And uh, when would this place be built? Uh, well, not later than 1185. That was when the order was suppressed. 
A lot of the Templars were killed, you know, burnt to death, you know, some of them. Dear me, bad that. What harm have they done? Mm. Only got too rich for the king to go on tolerating them. In any case, I doubt if they did any particular good, Colonel. Then what do you study them for? Their buildings interest me. Sermons in stones, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes, this uh, oblong uh, eminence would be the, the base of the altar. And uh, here, uh, oh, how interesting. What is it? Uh, you see, at, at this end of the altar base, a small uh, cavity in the stone. Yes, yes. Uh, I think... Uh, yes, I can, I can get some of the, the turf away with my knife. There. Artificially made. Mm, rectangular. The inside... Smoothly finished. Any buried treasure in it? <laughs> Most unlikely, but uh, we may as well look. Uh, you got a match, Colonel? Yes, certainly. Thank you. <laughs> Gone out. The wind's too strong. I'll try again. That's better. Now, let's see. <sighs> well, upon my word. What have you found? Hmm. Well, I... I don't quite know. It <coughs> seems to be a small metal tube. It's of considerable age. I should say it's been hidden there a very long time. I, I believe. Um, let's have some more light on it. Yes, there's an inscription of some kind. And of course, we, we shan't be able to read it now. I we'll have to wait till we get back. <laughs> very dark suddenly. Yes. And infernally cold. Come on. Let's be getting back. Yeah, by all means. This splendid discovery has given me a remarkable appetite for dinner. <laughs> Beg pardon? Did you ring, sir? Oh, yes, I did. Would you kindly bring me another candle? I find two inadequate to light this large room. Take this one, sir. I can get another. That's yeah, very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, don't forget, I'd, I'd like early tea tomorrow. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Ah, that's better. Now I can get a good look at this thing. Yes, quite a clear inscription. Just a little rubbing. I'll make it legible. There. Mm. Latin. <laughs> it's useful. Quis es iste qui venit. Who is this that is coming? Oh, well, well. <laughs> Now, now, this thing is quite, quite obviously a whistle. Not unlike a modern dog whistle, indeed. Who is this that is coming? Eh? <laughs> Best way to find out is evidently to whistle for him. Still in working order? That's remarkable. Splendid! Splendid! But goodness me, what forced the wind to get up in a few minutes? What a tremendous gust! Ah, there! Uh, knew that window fastening was no use. Oh, all three candles out. It's enough to tear the room to pieces. I'll, I'll have to get this window shut. Somehow. Uh, uh, that's better. Well, uh, that uh, really made me quite uneasy. Won't be a minute, Colonel. Just going to collect my ulster from my room. Right. I'll wait for you. Oh, good morning, sir. Good morning. If you please, would you like me extra blankets on your bed, sir? Uh, thank you. Yes, I think I should. It seems likely to turn rather colder. One will do. Which bed shall I put it on, Which sir? One? Well, why, the one I slept in last night, of course. I beg pardon, sir, but you seem to have tried both on them. Hmm? Leastways, we had to make them both up this morning. Really? Well, how very absurd. I certainly never touched the other except to, to lay some things on it. What did it actually seem to have been slept in? Oh, yes, sir. All the things was crumpled and thrown about always, if you'll excuse me, sir. 
quite as if anyone hadn't passed but a very poor night. Dear me, well, as a matter of fact, I did pass a very poor night. Oh. First that terrible wind got up and then I, I had some extraordinary dreams about a man running along the beach as if he were flying in terror. The sort of pale shape hopping, bobbing along behind him. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord that was nasty, sir. <laughs> I should have woke myself up screaming if I had dreamed a thing like that. <laughs> I probably did. At least I woke up. I actually went to that window to have a look at the beach. But there was, there was only somebody standing about down there. What for at that time of night, I can't imagine. Oh, we get all sorts on the beach. Tramps and lurkers and the like, sir. I'll get you a blanket. Now. Oh, I'm very sorry to have given you the extra trouble. Oh, by the way, I expect a friend of mine soon. A Mr Rogers from Cambridge. He'll be occupying the spare bed. That's all right. Oh, yes, to be sure, sir. It's no trouble at all. Quite an extraordinary wind that we had last night, eh, Parkins? It's remarkable. It, it rose out of complete stillness all in a moment. Blew my bedroom window open. In my old home, we should have said someone had been whistling for it. Should you, indeed? Hmm. Is there a, a superstition of that kind still rife in your part of the country? I don't know about uh, superstition. They believe in it all over Denmark and Norway, as well as on the Yorkshire coast. And my experience is, mind you, that there's generally something at the bottom of what these country folk hold to. <laughs> your drive. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, of course. Thank you. I'm off my game this morning, after that disturbed night. Yeah, uh, as to what you were saying, Colonel, I think I ought to tell you that my own views on such subjects are very strong. I disbelieve entirely in the so-called supernatural. Eh? That's so? You're an unbeliever in every sense, then. Second sight ghosts. Don't believe in anything of that kind. In nothing whatever of that kind. Now, as to this whistling for the wind, let me give you my theory about it. The laws which govern winds are really not perfectly known, and not at all, of course, to fisher folk. Well, go on. Uh, a stranger, perhaps of eccentric appearance, is seen repeatedly on the beach at some unusual hour and is heard whistling. Soon after, a violent wind rises, as a man who could read a barometer could have foretold that it would. Hence, a legend is born. Uh, now take last night's wind. As it happened, I myself was whistling. I blew a whistle twice, and the wind seemed to come absolutely in answer to my call. Now, if anyone had seen me... Whistling, they... were you? And uh, what sort of whistle did you use? Why, the thing we discovered in the ruined altar last night. When I took a good look at it, I, I realised its purpose at once. Oh, well, if I were you, I should be very careful about using such a thing. Hmm? Never know what you might be doing. Oh, nonsense, Colonel. Harmless, innocent. <laughs> so... oh. 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 <laughs> now then, boy, now then. And where you're going. <sighs> what in the world is the matter with the child? Is he hurt? Frightened, more like. Had a fright, lad. Have you? Come now, brace up. Be a man. Oh, sir, I seen it wiving me out of the window and I don't like it. Now, my boy, what happened eh? Take your time. Oh, sir, me and my brother, we was playing about on the grass in front of the globe, like we do. Mr Simpson, don't mind. Yes, yes. Well, I'll, I'll look out of the front window and I'll, I'll see it a waving at me. See what? What did you see? A person, was it? Well, a sort of a person it might have been. It, it was all white and floppy. Hmm? White uh, floppy? <clears throat> Had this thing a face? I couldn't see it. It looks sort of crumpled, sir. Now, now, be quiet a moment. The, Which was this window? A second one, sir. The big window what got two little ones at the side. Very well, my boy. You run away home now. I expect it was some person trying to give you a start. Here's a sixpence, oh. sir. No, I see it's a shilling. Uh, now be off. Be off home and uh, don't think any more about it. Thank you, sir. A shilling! Oh, shilling! Oh, that's curious. It, it's evidently my window the lad was talking about. Sounds like it, certainly. Do you mind if we, we break off our game and go back to the hotel, Colonel? I'd no, rather no. like to find out whether anyone has been interfering in my room. Of course, of course. I'll come back with you. Better two than one if there's any trouble in the offing. Hmm. Well, dear me, it's, 
This is more serious than I thought. What's the matter? Well, I, I remember now that, that before I started this morning, I locked my bedroom door. Yes. Well, it's locked now, and I've got the key. Mm -hmm. Now, if the servants are in the habit of going into one's room while one is out, I, 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 I don't approve of it at all. Well, uh, let's have a look inside. Nothing seems disturbed. Except your bed. Oh, but, the, but that isn't my bed. I, I use the other one. But uh, it does look as if someone's been playing tricks with it. Yes, indeed. Bed clothes all bundled up and twisted. Quite sure you haven't been using it? Yes, of course. Ah, I see now what's happened. I must have disordered the bed clothes last night in unpacking, and they haven't made it since. Well, uh, ring and ask. Yes, I will. Mm, yes, that's it. They came in to make it, and that boy saw them through the window, and then they were called away and locked the door after them. That's the explanation. We'll soon know, for here comes the chambermaid. Very briskly service here. <laughs> Not as regards bed-making, evidently. <laughs> did you raise them? Uh, yes, I did. Have you, uh, have you been into this room at all during the morning while I've been out? Oh, no, sir. I made that bed and straightened that one when you was in the room this morning, and I've not been in since. Have you another key in case you wished to enter the room? No, sir. Mr. Simpson keeps the duplicate keys. Uh, I see. Well, well, thank you. Sorry to have bothered you. It's all right, sir. This is most extraordinary. Uh, you know, Colonel, in my own opinion is that that, that that boy was taking us in. Play acting. No, no. Don't believe that. Hmm? You can't mistake genuine shock. I've seen it in soldiers too often to mistake it. You're a very generous man, Colonel. More so than I am, I'm afraid. I believe in hard facts, you know. And no fancies? Well, each to his beliefs. Quite. Uh, oh, by the way, while you're here, take a, take a look at the old whistle. Now that I've cleaned it up, you see the see the Latin inscription. It's interesting, isn't it? Quiz est iste quae venit. Hmm. Mm. What do you mean to do with this thing? Uh, when I get back to Cambridge, I shall submit it to my colleagues and see what they think of it. And then, if they, if they consider it worth having, I may present it to one of the museums. Well, you may be right. Shall I tell you what I would do with it? By all means, Colonel. I'd chuck it straight into the sea, and huh? I advise you to do the same. Sure, sure, really. That's superstitious nonsense. A rare relic like this. Of course, I shan't do anything of, anything of the kind. <laughs> Whistle for the wind, indeed. I wonder. I wonder if I could do it again. I might just try. If nothing happens, so much for Colonel Wilson's bogies. Just one try. Shall I clear your table, sir? Mm. Oh, uh, yes, 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 do, by all means. Uh, nothing else you want, sir? Uh, nothing, uh, thank you, waiter. <coughs> Hotels, very quiet tonight? Uh, yes, sir, we don't get many visitors this time of year. Only you and Colonel Wilson stay in there. Uh, the Colonel's gone to bed. Must be one or two strangers about, though. I saw a person hanging round on the beach last night, and he seemed to be there again this evening. What sort of a person, sir? Oh, well, it's too dark to see. Somebody in a in a light-coloured garment. I uh, didn't altogether like the look of whoever it was. Perhaps you might have a word with Mr Simpson. Yes, certainly, sir. He's got a short way with him with suspicious characters, Mr Simpson. Well, uh, good night, sir. Uh, uh, funny weather uh, we're having, isn't it? That windstorm again this afternoon and yesterday. Is, is that, uh, that typical of these parts? I've never known anything like it since I've been here, sir, and that's 15 years. 
Mm, for all it's such a cold, bleak place, squalling, howling, something frightful all of a sudden out of nothing. It, it, it would make some people quite nervous to hear it, I expect. Yes, it would, sir. Well, I must be off to bed, I suppose. I, I believe I've seen some shelves of books in one of the rooms, by the way. Can you tell me where to find them? Yeah, they'd be in the writing room, sir. You'll ah. find all sorts there. They're pretty old and musty, most of them. All the better. I want something on the dull side to read myself to sleep with. Somehow, I don't find this place conducive to, to sound sleep. Oh, uh, my friend Mr Rogers may be arriving tomorrow. Oh, well, that'll be company for you, sir, won't it, then? Uh, good night, then. Uh, good night. What's that? Oh. Candlestick, I suppose. Oh, infernal nuisance. Mm. Good heavens. Somebody in the other bed. Of course, Rogers. Rogers? How on earth did you get here? Why didn't you waken me? Rogers? Rogers? Is that you? No. It's me. No, no, keep away, keep away, keep away, keep away. This is a joke, Rogers. It's a very bad one, dressing up like a child's idea of a ghost. No, keep off, I tell you. Oh. See your face? At any rate. No. No. Help! Help! Somebody help me! What the? Good God! Hold on, Parkins. Let go, you filthy brute! <coughs> It's gone. Uh. Parkins. Uh. Everything's all right. Here, drink this brandy. It'll race you up. Uh. Uh. Oh, thank you. Oh, Colonel, you, you saved my life. Oh, always carry a little hip flask. Never know when it may come in useful. No, no, I, I mean coming in when you did it. It had me by the throat, you know. Uh, Colonel, did you... Did you see it? I saw it all right. Oh, well, thank heaven for that. If, if you hadn't, you'd have thought I was mad. What did it look like to you? Hmm? Difficult to say. Whitish, floppy. Didn't get a close look at it, though. I did. And do you know what the, the most horrible thing about it was, Colonel? Its, it, its face was made of crumpled linen. Yes, yes, uh, that's how it looked to me before it vanished. It, it didn't vanish. It, it's there on the floor. Eh? What? Good dad. A heap of bedclothes. Yes, just so, but a few moments ago they had a dreadful, murderous life of their own. It's, it, it's like a nightmare, but it happened. What can I do, Colonel? Suppose it happens again. Suppose I can never go to bed without fearing that I shall wake in the night and see that. Uh, I don't think it'll happen again if we take adequate precautions. Where's that uh, 
whistle thing. Hmm? Oh, there. there. On the washstand. I can't touch it. I can't touch it. Don't ask me to. Don't no bother. I'm going to pick it up in my handkerchief. So, open the window and hurl it out. So. I have a strong arm still and a powerful throw. And you can be assured that thing's lying among the stones on the beach by now. And whoever owns it is welcome to take it. I, I, I'm sorry I mocked at you, Colonel, and the things you believe in and other people believe in, I won't again. That's good. I think you're wise. Quis est iste qui venit. Who do you think it was, Colonel? How should I know, my dear fellow? Easy enough to whistle. But there's no telling what will answer. I'll sleep in here with you tonight, if you don't mind. <laughs> so, you see, Mrs. Spenlow, why the mere sight of fluttering linen upsets me, even now. Yes, uh, yes, Professor. Quite understandable. Uh, will you excuse me? I think I see my husband beckoning. Oh, Herbert, will you ask Annie to bring my smelling salts, dear? I feel quite, quite faint. In O oh, Whistle and I'll Come to You by M.R. James from 1963, adapted by Michael and Molly Hardwick, Michael Hordern was Professor Parkins, Earl Grey, Brown, James Thomason, Purden, Austin Trevor, Colonel Wilson, Hilda Kreisman, Mrs Spenlow, Rob Lefevre, Rogers, Sheila Grant, the chambermaid and the small boy, Anthony Hall, the waiter, and Malcolm Hayes, the thing. Special effects were by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop and the producer was Charles Lefevre.